It is the morning of the 13th of March, 1989. It is a cold, crisp Monday morning in Quebec, Canada. Six million people are getting out of bed to get ready for work, only to find their houses without power and heat. The culprit would later be found to be more than 150 million kilometers away. Three days prior, 300 kilometers outside of Quebec at the Geomagnetic Observatory in Ottawa, scientists have been monitoring several large solar storms. On Friday afternoon, they sent out an alert to all the Canadian electricity companies, warning them of the impending solar storm. As it often is with these kinds of warnings, it was mostly ignored, a decision that would later turn out to have severe consequences. Back in Quebec in the early hours of Monday morning, it is 2.43 a.m. The solar storm has hit full force. It slams into the Earth's magnetic fields and the superheated plasma travels along the magnetic field lines coming down towards Earth close to the magnetic north and south pole. The solar storm has now hit the Earth full force and it begins to induct a huge amount of power in the existing power grid. From when the first circuit breaker popped, it took just a few minutes before more than 200 individual faults were detected across the entire country. The large coils on the transformer station were literally burning and melting into solid blocks of metal due to the immense heat that were produced because of the increased um, electricity. Electric fires were popping up across the region and the Canadian power companies still have no idea what just hit them. Things were chaos. Six million people are without power and heat. And with the outside temperatures reading well below freezing, people were beginning to do everything they could to stay warm. Out of the streets, things weren't much better. Without power, there were no traffic lights causing massive gridlocks. It took nine hours before the power was restored and the damages totaled 20 million US dollars. It was later reported that the storm has been so severe that auroras was visible as far south as Florida. This event was likely a huge contributor to the 1969 launch of the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, or just SOHO for short, that is constantly mon monitoring the sun to allow us to better understand events like this. On a more personal note, I actually used data from this exact satellite for my master thesis that focused on trying to predict uh, events like this, where I did a number of computer simulations of the magnetic field structures of the sun to try and better understand what kind of, of, of mechanics leads up to a solar flare so that we hopefully in the future someday is going to be able to uh, monitor and, and see these events happening and predict them before they happen instead of what we have now where we can just see the flare go off and then we just have like uh, a few days of, of warning before it actually hits but actually being able to predict them um, beforehand would be super awesome. The outcome of this however were that stricter rules were also set in place to force electrical companies to ensure their equipment are protected against storms like this so even though that we have been hit by similar strength storms since the 1989 Quebec incident, it has not caused severe consequences as it did back then. And they ended up actually building a fully functioning space shuttle. It went to space, and in many ways, the space shuttle was far superior than its American counterpart. So now, all of a sudden, you have a rocket without an internal referencing system. 